Would you like to know exactly how your income tax is calculated? If so, this video is just right for you because we will go through the whole calculation process together. Hi, my name is Mel here from Contus Tax Consulting and nowadays usually we use some kind of software to do our taxes such as TaxFix, Smartsteuer, Steuerbord, WonderTax, etc. Or we just hand the whole thing over to a tax consultant like us for example. If you're a freelancer or self-employed, our services might just be perfect for you. But because we outsource it or do it using software, many people don't even know anymore how income tax is actually calculated and how your taxes are actually calculated in the end. Since we keep getting a lot of questions about this, I figured I'd record a basics video here in which we go through this step by step together. Since obviously now we'll be working very specifically in this video, I'll grab some heavy literature. Let's look at paragraph two of the Income Tax Act together. And here it says, scope of taxation, definitions, the following are subject to income tax. First, income from agriculture and forestry. Second, income from business. Okay, I think I'm going to make this a bit simpler in this video. And so at this point, it is very important that if you're self-employed, first and foremost, you have sales. So all the money that somehow comes to you as part of your self-employment. By the way, this does not necessarily have to be money, but can also consist, as they say, in monetary value. Monetary value is, for example, when you get items, a service, or something in return for your work. Influencers, for example, are often paid in products rather than money, for example. However, you also have to pay tax on that kind of income. That means that the very first thing you have is your revenue. Important at this point, this is your net turnover. If you have to pay Umsatzsteuer, that has nothing to do with income tax. You calculate with your net sales and you can then deduct your operating expenses from this. The operating expenses are all the costs that you can deduct in your current self-employment, so all costs that you need to generate your sales. I have already recorded an in-depth video on the topic of business expenses and what you can deduct, which I'll link in the top right corner. I have also already recorded a whole series of in-depth videos on the topic of income tax, which I'll link to you in the video description below. So, if you're interested in a particular topic in more depth, be sure to check it out. The important thing here is that we have the operating income, that is the sales, then the operating expenses, and the result is your income. There's a difference between revenue, which is sales, and income, which is profit or loss. Stupidly enough, the German legislator, i.e. the tax law, distinguishes between two types of self-employment. The first is income from freelance activities, which is called Einkünfte aus Selbstständiger Tätigkeit, or income from a business. If you're not a freelancer, you are a Gewerbe this means that we already have two possible tax types from the Income Tax Act, namely income from self-employment and income from a business. All in all, the German Income Tax Act not only knows these two types of tax from self-employment, but a total of seven types of income. In your income tax return, for example, you also have to declare income from non-self-employed work. Non-self-employed work means that you are not self-employed, but employed somewhere. You also have to declare your income from employment in your income tax return. There's also income from agriculture and forestry. If you have an agricultural business, you would also have to declare your profit or loss. Then there is the whole area of renting and leasing. For example, if you bought an apartment and then rented it out, you also have income where you might be able to offset costs and also then report that profit or loss in your income tax return. The next tax type is income from capital assets. For example, you buy shares and then sell them later at a profit. That's usually also taxable. Usually the securities account or the bank already withhold this tax, which is the so-called final withholding tax. You do not necessarily have to declare this income in your tax return. However, it sometimes makes sense to include the investment income in your tax return if your own individual tax rate is lower than the final withholding tax, so lower than 25%, because then you actually pay less tax or, in certain circumstances, even get tax back. The next tax type is the so-called other income. This is not a collective term, but there's a fairly precise definition of what falls under other income. One example would be private sales transactions. Private sales transactions are, for example, the sales of Bitcoin. 
If you bought Bitcoin and then sell them at a profit, then you can be taxable under certain circumstances and, if so, as other income. And with these five types of income, plus the freelance activity and Gewerbe activity, we have our seven types of income. You add these types of income together and then you have your total income. And here is the first important point you should know. If you make a profit, for example, with one type of income and a loss with another, you can offset them against each other. This isn't always possible, so you can't offset every type of income against every other type of income. For example, you can't offset losses from Bitcoin trading with your employment. What you can do, for example, is that if you make a profit on your employment, which is usually the case, otherwise you wouldn't go to work there, and losses from a self-employed activity, those you can offset against each other. For example, if you have a salary job and a gross annual salary of 100,000 euros and you start up a side hustle that year and make a loss of 20,000 euros, then you can offset this and you don't have to pay taxes on the whole 100,000 euros, but only on the sum, or in this case, the difference of 80,000 euros. This means that you really only have to pay tax on what you had as income per year added together. If we add up this income, we first have the sum of the income. And if we deduct from this sum of income, the old age relief and the relief amount for single parents, then we have the total amount of income. If you don't have either of these or neither of those apply to you, the sum of your income is the same as the total amount of income. From that total amount of income, we first deduct losses, so losses from other years, such as the previous year or from the following year. And this means you can not only offset losses from the same year, but also from other years. I've also made a more in-depth video on the topic of offsetting losses. You can find that too with all the other videos below in the video description. This means, however, that we first deduct the losses from the other years from the total amount of income, but then we also deduct, for example, extraordinary burdens such as health care costs and special expenses. Special expenses are for example insurances like your health or pension insurance. There's also an in-depth video on this. Once we subtract all that the result we have is income. When you calculate your income you can deduct the child care allowance and possibly a hardship allowance. And when you have done that we finally have your taxable income which is the basis for calculating your income tax. With this taxable income, you can now look at these tax tables. There are different tax tables for single or married people, and you can see how much tax you have to pay. However, these days, the whole thing's a bit more interactive. There's a tool on the website of the Ministry of Finance. You can find the link below in the video description. And here, you just enter your taxable income, and the tool will tell you how much income tax you have to pay. And we'll just take a look at that together. And so I'm going to take you onto my screen with me. This is what the page looks like. This is where I have to enter my taxable income, my ZVE. And I'll type in here 100,000 euros. Then I have to indicate whether I'm married or single. This is because married people can file a joint tax return in which everything is added together, but the rate is different. And I have to indicate the accounting year. I can go way back to 1958, so here you can actually calculate how much taxes your parents would have had to pay, or hopefully did pay, in the year you were born. But let's stay in 2022 and click on Calculate. It calculates in the background and then shows me here taxable income 100,000 euros single calculation year 2022. And here it tells me that on these 100,000 euros taxable income, I have to pay a tax of 32,732 euros. However, that's not all because I also have to pay a solidarity surcharge of 1,800 euros and 26 cents. This gives me the total tax burden of 34,532 euros and 26 cents for the year 2022. This is exactly what I will have to pay. Important at this point, there are also differences between your average tax rate and marginal tax rate. There's again a more in-depth video on this in the video description, but that's also what's shown to me here. That means I have an average tax rate of 34.53% and a marginal rate, that is a personal marginal tax rate or top tax rate of 42%. All of this is what the tool tells me. Once you've calculated your taxable income yourself, you can do the math yourself. So for the year 2022, I will have to pay about 35,000 euros in taxes. 
But that doesn't mean that this is actually what I have to transfer to the tax office now. After all, I may have already paid taxes in advance during the year. To be honest, not just possibly, but that's usually the case, such as a final withholding tax. The already mentioned deductions on capital gains are an advance payment on the income tax. And a second type of tax, sometimes understood as a separate tax, is also a prepayment on your income tax, namely the payroll tax, which is deducted from your paycheck every month. If I assume that every month I have a payroll tax deduction in the amount of 2,000 euros, then I have already prepaid 12 times 2,000 euros per month for income tax. 12 times 2,000 euros is 24,000 euros. So of those 35,000 euros now, only 11,000 remain. And then, and some of you self-employed people will know this, there are quarterly advance payments for income tax. Self-employed people do not have income tax deductions, which means that they have to make quarterly advance income tax payments. And if I now pay 4,000 euros in advance for income tax, four times in one year, I have already paid a total of 24,000 euros per year in income tax, plus four times 4,000 euros. So I have made 16,000 euros in advance payments of income tax, and that's a total of 40,000 in tax payments. And if now the tax assessment arrives and has exactly this calculation in it, taxable income of 100,000 euros, which results in a tax burden of 35,000 euros, then 40,000 euros have already been paid in advance, which results in a tax refund of 5,000 euros. And with this, we are finally at the end of this calculation. Normally, each tax assessment is then also at the same time the prepayment notice for the next year. I know that this whole video was relatively dry. Thank goodness not as dry as this ham here. If you still have questions about this or something isn't quite clear yet, just ask your question below in the comment section and I'll try to help you out as best I can. But if you say to yourself, oh God, I don't feel like doing that at all. I am a self-employed person and I want to have a tax consultant who does everything for me, then I have a great tip for you. We are a specialized online tax consultant and I'll put a link to our services here. Please take a look at our online community where you can also ask all of your questions about tax deductions, etc. How to register, I explain in this video. Or just watch one of our next videos, such as this one.